Dave, you had an experience in your career when supply chain disruptions actually caused a manufacturing line to shut down. Tell me about this story. Absolutely. So much of the work that, that I do currently and for much of the last you know 10 years has been uh, with operations on the plant floor, trying to find ways to keep facilities running uh, or to make them run more profitably. Uh, and of all the facilities that I've ever worked with, uh, I'm not sure any of them will ever say that they do a good job with preventative maintenance, right? So doing something to make sure that our machines and facilities stay up and running uh, so that we, we don't go down. Um, I, I worked with one mid-sized co-packer um, within the last probably 18 months or so, and they're the only facility that I will say has ever been allergic to preventative maintenance. They had, uh, you know, nearly 20 people on maintenance staff um, on this relatively small facility, and they all liked standing around. They all liked welding. They all liked disappearing at odd hours for extended periods of time. I'm not sure I saw a single person ever do preventative maintenance. They had a whole system in there to go help them do preventative maintenance. I'm not sure anyone ever checked up on that system. So, I was there working with them um, at the facility one Thursday morning, or I came in on the Thursday morning to check what's going on, and they had shut the line down. And whenever you walk in and the line shut down, that, that's always a bad thing, right? They lose tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, every hour that the line is shut down. So, so I go check it out, and they're, they're telling me that it sounded like the gearbox of this machine sounded like a jet airplane taking off. And I'm like, well, that's not how it should sound. Uh, so, so we did a little bit of look and did a little bit of digging within the first hour or so we realized that no one had any idea what type of oil or lubrication goes into it, which means that no one had checked it in the last, I don't know, maybe 10 years, but certainly at least for the last 14 to 16 months. And so long story, slightly shorter, um, they nuked the gearbox, this, I don't know, 10 to $100,000 gearbox to this machine, which was critical to the entirety of of their facility and that they spent, you know, the next hour or they, they spent the next day or two kind of limping through at half speed while they were trying to go through the process to figure out if they could get another one. Uh, fun fact, there were zero in the entire world because according to the manufacturer, no one had ever broken one before. Now, if we want to believe that no one had ever broken one before or not, I guess that that's a different story uh, because uh, of a bunch of supply chain issues. It was, yeah, all of the correct type of lubrication that they were supposed to put in the machine uh, was out of stock for, you know, three weeks. And they had about 24 hours worth of this stuff left and there were no spare parts to be had. Uh, so as we go through this process, that they kind of got some part, they kind of got some parts in and kind of bubble gummed and duct taped it together in order to to run at a significantly slower rate. And not really particularly sure what sort of lubrication they put in it, Sarah, because honestly, I don't want to know because I feel like that makes me more culpable um, if I were to know all, all of the uh, all, all of these uh, little details. But, uh, I, you know, based on my calculation of the time that they were completely down, they, they lost somewhere between about two and five million dollars from the combination of the, the lack of kind of forethought and not having the right people in place and not being able to get the right parts.